guys, welcome to my channel, The Planted Carly Flower. I appreciate you guys being here so much. I'm Carly. Today we are gonna be talking about rooting Hoyas. Yes, some people have had trouble rooting Hoyas. I've had trouble rooting Hoyas. Some are easier to root than others, and some are faster or slower than others. But let's go ahead and talk all about rooting Hoyas. To be daring, baby, dance the night away. I let my head down if I want. Don't you just get tired chasing fame and being pretty all the time? Okay, guys, so rooting Hoyas. Like I said, some are easier to root than others. Um, these are the methods I prefer for the type of Hoyas that I have. Um, this is not by any means the only way to root Hoyas or the only decision you can make in rooting Hoyas. You can absolutely use whatever method works best for you. This is just what works best for me. Um, and we're going to go over just a few options um, as far as rooting goes. Okay, so we're going to start off um, with Hoyas that have more of a woody stem. Okay guys, this is an example of a Hoya with what I would consider a woody stem. If you can see the stem, it looks like it's wood. It looks like bark or tree. I hope you can see that. I will try and put a close-up picture in so that you can see what that looks like. Anyway, that was my that was my Hoya vitilinoids, and I am gonna put a picture here of the stem up close so you can see it in case my close-up wasn't good enough. And that is what I mean by woody stem. It's got a more like a woody, barky type of stem. And those type of Hoyas, I prefer to root in LECA. I go ahead and I fill up a net pot, if it fits in the net pot. If not, I use a little mason jar. And um, I will give you examples of both of those. And I fill it up with LECA and then I give it a really good reservoir, probably three-fourths of the way full of water and I just keep it at that level as much as I can. I top it off every couple days. Um, I don't tend to flush these too often because I don't want to disturb it. So I make sure that the LECA is super, super clean when I put it in there. I don't necessarily boil it or anything. Um, I find that to be a, an unnecessary step, but you can boil the LECA prior if you prefer to. It's all personal preference. And um, I, or I just rinse it very thoroughly till the water is coming out crystal clear. And then I put the plant in the vessel and I put the LECA all around it so that it's stable and it's nice and tight in there. And then I give it a three fourths reservoir and I just kind of leave it to do its thing. Um, I prefer LECA because it gives the plant stability. It roots much faster. I feel for me in LECA um, and it's just worked out the best for me in my environment. You can also root these types of stems in water. Um, I personally have had more failures in water, straight water than LECA. I don't know why I couldn't tell you the science behind that. I also feel like they root for me slower in water, but it will absolutely root for you in water for the most part, as long as it's a healthy cutting and it's not having any issues. Um, but that's what I prefer to use for plants with that type of barkier, woodier stem is I prefer LECA um, or water. Okay, now Hoyas, which have um, a softer, fuzzier type of stem, I'll put a picture of one here. This is my Hoya Affinis, or yeah, my Hoya Affinis, that's, that's right. And um, I tried to root her in Lekka and she rotted almost immediately. She did not like that at all. She did not like being in water. Now I'm saying, not saying you cannot root a fuzzier, softer stemmed Hoya in water or in Lekka. I'm not saying you can't. I prefer not to. I myself personally have had more failures in Lekka. I prefer to plant these directly in soil and root them that way. I keep the soil slightly damp, um, I don't let it dry up fully, and it roots pretty good. Within a month I can't even pull the cutting out of the pot anymore and I know it's fully rooted. I tend to leave those plants in soil. I find that a water rich environment for me is not really conducive to helping it root or helping it continue to flourish. I find them easier to rot in pond or leca, so I go ahead and I usually leave those in soil. As you can see, my Hoya Affinis is in soil, and she will stay that way. <laughs> um, these softer, fuzzier stemmed Hoyas, just for me, seem to do better in a soil environment. Um, Linearis is another one that I root in soil. Um, I've tried to root it several times in water, and it just did not work for me. It always rotted on me. Um, 
again I've seen people root them in water just fine it's just for me it doesn't seem to stick so I root Hoya linearis in water and then I will try and transfer it over once it's starting to root to, to Leca and that did work for me pretty well I do have a pretty decent Hoya linearis in um, Leca sorry lost my train of thought there for a hot second um, so absolutely soil for those types of plants for me now a lot of people are probably thinking what about rooting in pond or in perlite that's really popular now I don't like to root in pond very much I could not tell you why um, I have had a lot of failures rooting freshly in pond when I'm talking like going from no roots at all just a cutting to a rooted plant I've not had success. I do prefer to have my plants in pond long term once they are rooted because I find it to be very easy care with a self-watering pot, but I, I absolutely do not like rooting in pond and I don't really know why. <laughs> I prefer to root in LECA and then transfer over to pond once it's fully rooted. Um, I also don't like rooting in perlite. I have tried rooting in perlite several times. I've tried rooting in perlite in plastic cups. I've tried it in mason jars. I've tried it in um, a prop box. It is just not for me and that's okay. That's why there's so many methods out there. You can definitely hone your, your craft and find what you prefer for rooting your plants, but perlite just is not it for me. I am not a fan. I'm also not a fan of rooting in moss. I, I don't know if there's just a not, like my brain doesn't compute to how wet or dry the moss should be. I can have plants living in moss long term. If you check out my moss video, I'll try and link it down below. I have plenty of philodendrons in, in moss that are just thriving, but I just do not like rooting in moss. I, I don't know why. It's just not for me. Um, especially when it comes to Hoyas, I, I, it's not my jam. Oh, so moss, perlite, and pond, they're just not for me when it comes to rooting. Uh, maybe we can do a little rooting experiment. I can take some cuttings of my Hoyas, put them in different substrates, and see how they, how they root, how long it takes, if they make it. If you're interested in something like that, absolutely leave me a comment down below and we'll go ahead and discuss that. Um, to root a Hoya, you definitely need a piece of stem with a node and ideally two leaves or more. Um, you can definitely root a Hoya with one leaf, but I always like to have a little bit of a safeguard in case that one leaf doesn't make it. Because if that one leaf doesn't make it, you're stuck with a stick with a node. And some that doesn't always work out in your favor, and it could take months and months for anything to come of it. So definitely try to have a couple or more leaves on there with the node in this. Let's get out my little vitilinoids again for a little, you're going to be our little experiment baby today. Okay, so a node is a place where two leaves come out of. You can see where these two leaves come out and there's the node there. Obviously this is a stem. This is a node. See the leaf coming out? So that's what you're looking for. If I were to cut this plant, which I am not, but if I were to cut this plant, I would cut it right above this node and I would have all this stem and a node to work from. See I wouldn't cut it because it's only one leaf, but if let's say there was another leaf there, I'd cut it here at the top of this node and then root this stem. So that's what you would do. Very easy to do. Rooting Hoyas is typically pretty safe bet. It's pretty easy. They, they definitely want to live. You can let them callus over for 24 hours or even a few hours if you want to. I never have had any problems just cutting and propping. Um, but yeah, absolutely. So that is all my information on rooting Hoyas. If you guys have any questions or if I left anything out that you want clarification on, absolutely drop me a line down in the comment section. I'll do my best to answer it. Let me know if you want that experiment for repotting. I can plan something for this coming month or next month. Um, I would love to do that for you if it's something that you're interested in. I think it would be a lot of fun. Um, and definitely leave me a thumbs up and subscribe if you are interested in seeing more planty content from me. I love it when you guys interact with my account. It's so helpful to me and I really appreciate it. My link tree is down below if you would like to follow me on Instagram or TikTok. I'm a lot of fun on there or at least I tell myself that I am and I am on there off and on all day. I cannot wait to interact with you guys. Thank you so much for being here. I hope you get to spend lots of quality time today with your plant babies. Thank you and take care.